I think what I look for is congruity. Is what you're telling me about yourself and your personal statement and why you want to be a physician, is that backed up in the things that you've done? Do those look like the same person to me? Today, you'll hear from some of the most competitive schools in the nation, Yale, Georgetown, and Harvard. There's no better advice than to take it from the people who make decisions on your actual medical school candidacy. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm an anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I'm the co-founder of Pre-Med Catalyst. I graduated from UCLA and trained at UCLA Medical School. And for the last seven years, I've been helping pre-meds just like you get into their dream medical schools. And now let's hear from Bruce Delmonico, the Assistant Dean of Admissions at Yale since 2006. And I, the theory behind it, obviously, is similar to other schools, is past performance will, to some degree, be predictive of, uh, of, of future experience. Uh, looking at the resume, looking at the recommendations, uh, primarily for that. Far too many pre-meds overcomplicate medical school admissions. They guess and try to figure out what medical schools want to see. But you don't need to look that up anymore. University of Colorado and Yale have both expressed it extremely clearly. What stands out to them are pre-meds with a proven track record. If you know that your passion for becoming a doctor involves serving the underserved, then build an application that is all around that theme. Too many pre-meds say that they want to become a doctor because they're passionate about mental health and athletes, underserved communities, and the advanced technology behind cardiac implantable devices. Then we open up their resume and it looks completely irrelevant to what they say they're truly passionate about. And if you want to see entire medical school applications, applications that have got accepted into some of these extremely competitive programs, I have eight full applications for you to view right now. These are the same personal statements, the same GPAs, MCATs, and extracurriculars that got these pre-meds accepted into schools like UCSF, Vanderbilt, UC San Diego, and I even included my own application that got me into my dream medical school, UCLA. It's always free, one click away in the link in our description box below. When you share that your passions are X, but your resume screams Y, it's just not consistent. And that lack of consistency does not give me confidence. It makes me feel like you did not take the actions you needed to to demonstrate and develop your interests and passions. And while this applies to themes, it also applies to values and character traits. One of the things that I look for when we are uh, selecting and recruiting students is resilience. And, and so a student who has um, come from a lower income family who uh, is perhaps his first gen and doesn't have the experience of a parent who went to college and certainly not a parent who is in medicine often has characteristics that I know will help them succeed an ability to conquer adversity. So I'm, I'm uh, very excited about that group of students. This evidence-based approach to admissions applies to values and character traits. Yale, as Dr. Brown said, is interested in students who have conquered adversity and demonstrated resilience. And so if you're looking to convey those traits, your application must have clear examples that point to you having built that character trait. You must have had some difficult situation that you overcame. And I'm not telling you to sit back in your chair and just wait for that right moment of adversity to come and pounce. You can take on challenging projects that will inevitably bring adversity to you. For example, if your organization puts on middle school outreach science fairs, you can choose to try and expand this offering to 20 middle schools instead of just the one. You can choose to take on that difficult science project and apply to present at the National Stem Cell Conference Poster Fair in three months, giving you a real deadline to generate, analyze, and organize that data. Here is the Dean of Harvard, Dr. George Daly. This is very, very important. What we've seen over the last couple of years and what's been very, concern very concerning is that medicine has become almost increasingly appealing to a, a core of elite students. And in fact, what we really need are individuals to come to medicine with tremendous idealism. They wanna serve 
the public. If you want to become a doctor to help people, something that every pre-med says, you must have evidence of this on your resume. The better the evidence, the stronger the candidate. There are levels to this. There is a difference between becoming a medical assistant for the summer, helping room 200 patients and getting their heart rate and blood pressure, and managing a computer lab in prison where you help inmates through their associate's degrees, teaching them real world skills and earning real world degrees that can help them acclimate to society when their time is done. Even though the latter is less medical, it is far more difficult to pull off, far more impactful for that population, and therefore is actually stronger evidence supporting one's desire to serve the public. And look, if you think, okay, Mike, I totally get it, this all makes sense, but this is hard and will take a ton of time. You want me to get all my good grades and be a scribe and be an EMT and do these extracurriculars and do my research? The short answer of it is yes. Welcome to medical school admissions. And if you have to take some more time to build that competitive application, this is why taking gap years is becoming more commonplace. So it's never too late. You cannot discriminate on the basis of age. We talk about, in committee meetings, we do talk about age in terms of experience, maturity, those kinds of things. So, and in, in terms of our whole class, the last few years I've looked at the statistics, almost half the class has been out at least one year. And we have had probably in the class 10 to 15 or 20 who are several years out. Take the time that you need to build the caliber of application that meets your medical school goals. Because if you don't, there are real consequences. Yes, there's the time and money that goes into a year's worth of an application cycle. But worse, there's the difficulty of reapplication. Remember, the average pre-med applies to 18 to 25 medical schools and gets in nowhere. If you end up being in that boat, the next year you'll also have to answer an extra question. If 25 schools passed on you last year, what is different about this year that would change my mind? So please, if you do not feel like your application is ready, take the time that you need. You want the first time you apply to be the strongest time you apply so that it is your last time you apply. If you like this video, you may really enjoy working with us directly. The Pre-Med Catalyst program is designed to help you take back control of your pre-med journey. We'll develop your theme and your narrative and build your application accordingly to close down that gap. Most importantly, you'll always have a support and accountability system to help you make the right strategic decisions for you. So that if you want to apply with no gap year or on your own timeline, you can. If you're interested, there is more information in the link in our description box below. Applicants or reapplicants, especially to just go back to our website, take a real good look at it critically in terms of their application in, in reference to what we're looking for. Um, look at their experiences and see where they might have gaps as to what we're looking for, because not all schools are looking for what we are and we're not looking for what all other schools are looking for. And so the framework for becoming more competitive is understand how competitive are you right now? How competitive do you need to be? And what is the gap between the two? Once you can clearly define that gap, close it with the appropriate accomplishments, projects, and extracurricular activities. And look, if you feel like that's a hard thing to do, you don't have to do all of it in one day. The pre-med journey can feel out of control at times, and often it's because there just is so much to accomplish. So pre-meds, remember that admissions committees are really just looking for signs that will raise their confidence you will be an asset to their program and their mission statement. If this video helped at all, you'll love this video here where we continue to review ADCOM interviews to find the secrets of standing out. University of Colorado will tell you that paradoxically, not having a well-rounded application, having a well-unbalanced application may be the right decision for you. Thanks for your attention here and I'll see you in that video there.